Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert and I'm here with the Motorola One Zoom, a Motorola One handset which is very different from the rest of the Motorola One family. For one it's more expensive at £379, uh, but for that extra cash you do get a nice quad lens camera setup as you can see right there, you get a nice OLED screen uh, and some other premium specs and features as well. Confusingly, the Motorola One Zoom isn't actually an Android One handset, unlike the rest of the Motorola One family as well, which is a bit unusual, uh, but it still boasts a nice stock version of Android, and of course those lovely Moto experience features on top of that as well. So we're gonna get a full unboxing, of course, get it all set up and take a bit of a hands-on tour of all the hardware and the software. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So that's the actual phone itself, just stick that aside for a second, check out what is in the rest of the box. So of course you get a big fat README, which is so fat because it's in lots of different languages, don't worry, you won't spend several nights pouring through that. Pokey pin device, hooray, to so actually get your SIM card in the bad boy. Safety information, boring. Three pin plug, and of course a USB cable, it's type C for powering up the Moto One Zoom again. And you do actually get a uh, pair of wired headphones bundled in there as well. There is actually a 3.5mm headphone jack here on the Moto One Zoom, so you'll be able to make full use of those. I mean, they'll be fine as like a backup pair. They've actually got some nice rubbery tips, they're not those horrible plastic shell affairs. With all that shenanigans, let's actually check out the exciting part of the phone itself. Now as you can see, it actually comes wrapped in a uh, transparent cover for added protection, which is a uh, Motorola staple these days. Great to see. Quite a lot of the uh, the budget to mid-range phones do actually come with a bundled cover. My review sample of the Motorola One Zoom is the electric grey model. And as you can see, no trades description concerns there. It is very grey indeed. You can also pick it up in a much more vibrant purple, although I believe that's an Amazon exclusive here in the UK and across Europe. Looks lovely though. It's actually a Gorilla Glass 3 finish, although it does have this sort of metallic style sheen when it catches the light. As you can see, it's got this sort of metallic gradient uh, finish to it. Very very, very attractive design, I do like it. And the good news as well is that sort of satin glass finish means that you don't get much in the way of smudges or anything as well, despite the fact that it is actually constructed of glass, similar to the, the likes of the OnePlus 7, which comes in that sort of matte glass finish as well. So as you can see there, my greasy mitts are not leaving any stains or smudges at all, so it seems to be doing the job. And of course, one of the more distinctive elements of the Motorola One Zoom's design is that quad lens camera grill slaps there right in the center in the back. Quite a large chassis, as you can see there. It does jut somewhat from the front surface but nothing too troublesome and of course a large part of that is actually taken up by the Motorola logo which actually doubles as a nifty LED notification light which is pretty snazzy as you can see that's lit up right now so that'll just light up when you're using the phone generally to let you know if there's any messages and stuff waiting for your attention. Definitely got quite the heft to it at 190 grams that's for sure certainly doesn't feel toy like let's just get it powered up good good we've got a good bit of juice in the tank and what I'm going to do now is get this fully set up and then we can have a bit more of an explore of that hardware and the software. Now first up as you can see there it is a dual sim tray so you can stick two sim cards in side by side if you want to use one for work one for personal whatever or alternatively that second sim tray does double as a micro SD memory card slot as well. Now while the other Motorola One handsets all have a rear physical fingerprint sensor, usually where that logo right there is, you actually get an in-display fingerprint sensor here on the Motorola One Zoom. So just gonna quickly get that set up now. Uh, it seemed to be absolutely fine in my hands-on session at EFA last week. Uh, we'll give it a full test now as well to see quite how responsive it is. It is of course just an optical sensor as you can see there, so I'll just take a simple 2D image of your print and use that to unlock the handset, but hopefully it should do the job nicely. So we are all set up and now straight into a nice bit of stock Android Pie. As you can see, that's just busy uh, restoring all my apps and... Uh Ah, God, I hate when it does that every time. Uh, all my apps and other bits from a, uh, a previous handset that I was testing out. Uh, so I'll just leave that to do that, ticking away in the background. As you can see, nice clean uh, version of Android with no crap or anything crammed on. Stop it! All right, that's it, mister. You are going straight on silent. As I mentioned before, it's not an Android One handset, uh, so you're not guaranteed those uh, couple of years of OS updates and, of course, the uh, the regular security updates and everything. But I've found in the past that Motorola, with its non-Android One branded handset, it's been absolutely fine uh, with the uh, the regular updates and everything as well and you should get at the very least a nice bit of Android 10 and hopefully Android 11 with this bad boy as well. I'd be surprised if that didn't come to the Motorola One Zoom. One of the only additions that Motorola sticks in there on top of the stock Android is the Moto app which adds the Moto experiences. So for instance you've got the Moto actions. This adds a bunch of gesture support, quite a lot of gesture support these days as you can see there. It's expanded quite a bit recently. One of my favorites is the swipe to shrink which is definitely handy when you've got a likes of a 6.4 inch handset. As you can see there just swipe down towards the corner, minimizes everything 
it works a charm. Just gonna quickly test out that fingerprint sensor as well. So uh, what you can do is you can either tap the screen or tap that power button to, uh, to light up the display. And then as you can see there, boom, straight into your desktops. Nice and nippy. You also get full face unlock here on the Motorola One Zoom as well. You can actually uh, enable the lift to unlock. Uh, so all you need to do is pick up the phone, uh, it'll immediately start scanning for your beautiful mug and then it'll unlock the device. You don't even need to bother with that in-display fingerprint sensor. So let's give this a go. I've just picked up my handset, it's scanning for my face and... It's unlocked, hooray! Unfortunately, even with that lift to unlock and uh, when it recognizes your face, as you can see there, you'll still have to swipe the screen in order to get into your device just like you would on an iPhone. However, if you do push the power button and then it does the face unlock, as you can see there, it bypasses the lock screen entirely. The other area where the Motorola One Zoom differs from the rest of the Motorola One family is that display. It's actually an OLED panel, nice and spacious at 6.4 inches, dinky little notch, poking its way into the action there, but as you can see, nothing too intrusive. It's a full HD plus resolution, so as you'd imagine, nice and crisp for your movie needs and all the rest. Nice wide viewing angles and certainly seems nice and bright on those top levels as well, so it should be absolutely fine for your outdoors action. Audio is pumped out of the uh, single bottom firing speaker. There's no stereo speaker setup, unfortunately, but if we just boost the volume up. It's actually pretty decent quality, uh, nice clear audio as you can hear there, reasonable volume on those top levels as well, so it should be absolutely fine for just enjoying a bit of video in the old homestead or out in the garden or whatever. Of course, you've got that uh, headphone jack as well if you want to stick in a wired pair, or you've got full Bluetooth 5 support as well. If I can finally get to the home, there we go. Well, the performance tip, it's a Snapdragon 675 stuffed in here with uh, four gigs of RAM in backup. So hopefully, touch wood, that should be absolutely fine for, you know, your everyday use and everything. Hopefully get a good bit of gaming on the go as well. I'll be testing the likes of PUBG Mobile to make sure that works all right. Um, but certainly so far, seems nice and smooth, despite the fact it's still busy downloading apps and ticking away in the background. Obviously, these things do take a little while to settle usually. But again, stay tuned for my in-depth review for a full performance report. And I've got high hopes for that battery as well. You get 4,000 milliamp cells stuffed inside of this thing. So again, hopefully that should easily keep you going all day, even with lots of intensive use. If you're using it as a sat-nav, playing with the camera a lot, doing a good bit of gaming, the likes of that. And you get 15 watt turbo power on board as well. So hopefully when you do run dry, it'll uh, charge up reasonably nippy. And last up on the specs front, you get a rather generous 100 128 gigabytes of space stuffed in there. As you can see, a large majority of it is available. Um, I've already had a, a lot of apps download in the background, and as you can see there, it's only using up 15 gigs of that so far with the OS and everything else as well. And of course, you've got that micro SD memory card support if you are running low. Of course, I've been saving the best for last because the highlight of the Motorola One Zoom is definitely that quad lens rear camera. I believe this is the first quad lens setup on a Motorola handset. So let's just do a bit of a run through of the specs first of all. The primary lens is a 48 megapixel f1.7 with built-in OIS. I've got no idea which order these are in, by the way, so I'm not going to bother pointing to individual ones because it'll just be completely making it up. And that's backed by a 16 megapixel wide angle lens offering a 117 degree view, an 8 megapixel telephoto lens with three times optical zoom. That's got optical image stabilization built in it, just like the primary lens does. And then you've also got a final five megapixel depth sensor in there for a bit of portrait shot action. Now I am of course planning on doing a full in-depth Motorola One Zoom camera review so stay tuned for my full thoughts on the setup and the photo and video quality and everything but I'll just give you a super quick tour right now. So as you can see here you've got this little doohickey down here which you can tap to switch between those three main lenses wide angle, standard and the telephoto zoom option. Besides that, it's more or less the same as the standard Motorola camera app. You can quickly switch to video with a quick tap here. You can shoot up to 4K resolution footage on the Motorola One Zoom. And you've also got a bunch of other bonus modes which you can uh, access with a quick tap here. Or I believe you can also just swipe across as well, like so. You've got Motorola staples such as the likes of the Spot Color. You now have a, a night vision mode as well, which I'm very keen to try out. Hopefully it should produce nice light well-balanced snaps even in those low light conditions. Of course, you've got your portrait mode using that five megapixel depth sensor, the likes of Cinegraph and everything as well. And if you tap your way into the settings with a quick tappy tap up here, you'll see you've got a whole bunch of uh, Motorola's AI features as well. So you've got the likes of the shot optimization, which recommends different modes based on the conditions. So for instance, I'll say switch to portrait mode if it detects a person, shoot to night mode if it detects that it's a bit crappy and low light. 
You've got the likes of the smart composition, which as you can see there, can just implement the rule of thirds and just straighten up a wonky shot, but it will save the original shot alongside if you don't like the new cropped version. You can shoot in full uh, raw format and everything as well. And as you can see, of course, you do have in-depth manual control, so you can just dive into that if you know what you're doing bit of ISO level, white balance, all that kind of shenanigans. Have a play around with all of that. And that's pretty much the main stuff. And you also get a 25 megapixel front facing camera as well. And I believe this uses quad pixel technology. So it'll just basically combine the information from uh, four pixels into one just to help brighten up a shot in those low light conditions. Seems to be doing all right here, despite the fact that you've obviously got that bright light right behind me. And of course, if you absolutely must, you do have the likes of the beauty modes and all that shenanigans in there as well. And a good bit of histogram action. Everyone loves a good histogram. So if you want to know more about that camera setup, definitely stay tuned for my full in-depth Motorola One Zoom camera review coming very shortly indeed. And my in-depth Motorola One review of the handset itself will hopefully be coming early next week. So yeah, definitely. What do you think of the Motorola One Zoom so far? I think for 379 quid, it's a nice bit of tech, solid mid-range smartphone. Definitely if that camera is uh, proves its worth, then it should be a great value for money. But it'd be great to hear your thoughts as well. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers guys, love you.